out of the mountains and the valleys. I didn't talk to Brent and about the music that and what I was going to speak about today. And he's been playing in the praise. He's been talking about mountains, been talking about hills, and all these different things that are going on in our lives and what we'll do. So we're going to be talking about the peace of God of the mountains and the valleys. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning for your work. We want to thank you for the opportunity to lift up Jesus every single day of our life, wherever we are. We're asking, Father God, that you would open our hearts, open our minds, help them to be receptive to what your Spirit has to teach us this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many of you love mountaintop experiences as Christians? Oh, yeah. Okay, mountaintop ones. I'll give you some mountaintop experiences. How about salvation? How many of you remember that one? Yes. 13 mile right. How many of you remember that mountaintop experience? Amen. How about baptism? Getting water yes. baptized. I got water baptized with my honey. We both went down together. That was wonderful. Getting water baptized. Everybody standing around and welcoming us into the family of God. I went, you know, I really went down three or four times before I really got it right. That is, uh, I got baptized a lot of times, but the, finally, the last time I realized what it was, very wicked in baptism. Raised to walk in newness of life. I understood that I had to die in my old life and be alive unto Jesus Christ. Amen. How about the Holy Spirit baptism? I mean, Amen. Oh, yeah. High time, right? Mountaintop yes. experience. How about the healing of your body? Yes. Oh, yeah. Amen. How about that? Wonderful time. How about deliverance from drugs, sexual addiction, alcohol, pornography? How about those mountaintop experiences? Yes. Amen. That took place. Gone, 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 gone. Amen. Yes, my sins are gone. Now my soul is free and in my heart's in song. Amen. Buried in the deepest sea. Yes, that's good enough for me. Remember those times? Yes. Yes. Amen. Wonderful times. Then we started praying for our loved ones, and one by one we'd see them come to Jesus Christ. And how many of you remember those mountaintop experiences? Amen. Amen. See my family like the domino effect, all of them getting saved. Going like that. Amen. Then my wife's family. Da, 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 da. That was wonderful to see all those things take place. Mountaintop experiences. Building of a church, mountaintop experience. Seeing the ground being broken up, seeing concrete being poured, seeing people walk in and dedicating a building. Those are mountaintop experiences. Debts paid off. How many of you remember that? Debts yes, paid off. Your financial debts paid off. Mountaintop experiences. Communion. Oh, absolutely. Having communion. Miraculous. Provision. When this church started, I said, Lord, you've got to provide us with $500 to get started. I said, I'll buy a PA system, but you've got to provide us with $500. By, I want to know that you're in. You've got to provide us with advertisements. You've got to provide us with a parking lot. You've got to provide us with a building. And one by one, he did it. Two weeks before we're supposed to leave the church, they had us stand in the front of the basket. Very humbling experience. And people come in and drop money in the basket. And we were believing God for $500, and he gave us 536 Wow. <laughs> He's so good. Mountaintop experience. Then they had a guy that just happened to be there, and he did a little article entitled, and brought a lot of laughs to the local people. It was called Hood Starts Church, okay? <laughs> so there was a lot, of, a lot of joking going on then, but nobody's laughing now, amen? That's right. Then divine appointments. Never yes. forget those. Uh, marrying, uh, having the uh, privilege of being able to marry Buck Jones' uh, daughter, Wanda Stokes and James Stokes, and coming to find out that Magic Johnson was James Stokes' best man, and being at that wedding. You talk about a divine appointment. Yes. Then getting opportunities to go up to the state legislature and pray up there in the Capitol. I'll tell you what, those are mountaintop experiences. Yes. How about baby dedications? Oh, yes. man, we're talking about oh, yes. tears in my eyes. We're lifting up babies before the Lord. And those are mountaintop experiences. But how about for young people? How about you're praying that that girl in the youth group will start looking your way and she starts looking your way? That's a mountaintop experience. How about that young boy looking your way? That's a mountaintop experience. Then some of you prayed for this, and then you thought, oh, man, that wasn't a good experience. <laughs> so... Anyhow, anyhow, we have mountaintop experiences. 
So I'm going to give some to you this morning before we get started. He's the God of the mountains. Say it with me. He's, He's the God, God of the mountaintops mountain. and the valley. Say he's the God of the mountains. He's the God of the mountains. And the valley. And the valley. Okay, we all want to be on the mountaintops, every, every one. We want to live up there. But you can't stay there. That's right. You can't stay there. Mount Carmel, let's go to the first one. Mountaintop experience of Bible character Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 18. You know, remember he said, let's build two altars here and we're going to sacrifice on these altars. You... You cut yours, and I'll cut mine. We'll put a cap on here, or we'll put a knots on here. First God who answers by fire, he's God. And so they have that. They spread it out there. They pour water on it. Elijah pours water on all of his three or four times. They have a dry, a dry sacrifice, and it still doesn't burn. They're cutting themselves, screaming, hollering, and God doesn't answer. But Elijah pours all that water all over that thing. Right. And God answers. How many of you think that would be a mountaintop experience? Oh, yeah. Now, there's, a, by the way, there's not 400 mentioned there. There's 850 prophets mentioned there. How many of you, if you were the preacher and God answers your prayer, but he didn't answer them 850, how many of you would go like that? <laughs> Told you I'm a man of God. You don't see any of that going on, but it was a mountaintop experience, yes. nonetheless, that God answered Elijah. How about Deuteronomy 11:29? Oh, I see this one. This is one we got to turn to. You can read these when you get home. 1 Kings 18 about Elijah. But I want to read this one here about the children of Israel. 11.29 And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God hath brought thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim, and the curse upon Mount Ebal. Uh, I'm not going to mention about Mount Ebal there, but if you want to know what that mountain was about, that was about a mountain of cursing. And how many of you want to get through, uh, rid of that mountain of cursing? Amen. Amen. I want to get in the mountain of blessing. Amen? Amen. Well, that was a high time, and Moses begins to say to the people, if you do it this way, God will bless you. If you don't do it this way, and they would respond, if we don't do it this way, the curses are come up, coming upon us. So there's two mountains. One, the guy is proclaiming blessing. The other one is cursing, and they're responding to each other. I want to make it very plain this morning. Respond to the blessing. Yes. When you hear the cursing, you say, in Jesus' name, I will not do that. Not going to do that. I want, how many of you want to be on, in on the blessing? Amen. Okay, those are mountaintop experiences. Yes. Mount Hermon, where Jesus was transfigured before Peter, James, and John. Take a turn to Matthew 17. Oh, I wish I'd have been there. How'd that song go? Oh, if I could only be, have the kind of faith that uh, Peter had to get out of the Remember that song that's about getting out of the boat? And if I could have this, uh, uh, but God, he bids me to come on the water and all that. I don't, I don't have the tune. But if I could have that type of faith, that I could stay on the mountains all the time. Well, here's a mountain I would have loved to have been on. Yeah. And that is Mount, Mount Hermon, where Jesus was. And after six days, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brings them up into a high mountain apart. <clears throat> was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Better than any Star Trek movie. Better than any Star Wars movie. Better than any of that. Can you imagine standing next to Jesus, and then you look over at him, and it's that bright? You can't even look at him. You're, you're turning away. And behold, there appears unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Peter, Peter's always sticking his foot in his mouth. While he had spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. You might want to underline those three verses, or those three words. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. 
And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, till the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. How many of you would have wanted to blab that one? <laughs> and I was with Moses and Elijah. And Jesus is not really who he appears to be. He's not a man. He is the Son of the living God. He's the fourth one that was in that flame with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He's the one that was a, the, a, the captain of the Lord's host. I met that one. Now that would have been me. I would have been uh, blabbing it. And I would have been proclaiming it all around. And Jesus would have said, shut your mouth until I've risen from the dead. Well, then there was another experience. Mount Horeb, where Moses received his calling from God. I'll never forget when I received my calling from God. I tried to shake it. I tried to run from it. I was at I-94 and 26 Mile Road. I was going over the freeway and I saw myself preaching and I said, I'll never do something stupid with my life like that. <laughs> had little, one of the little sweet tipperillas between my teeth on my motorcycle. And I threw it like that. I said, I'll never waste my life doing something like that. And God says, never say never. Amen. Yeah, never say never. <laughs> Funny, there was a guy who baptized me when I was a young man in the reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Brother Moses. And I still remember going under the water then. Still remember God speaking to me even when I was a kid about, you've got to serve me. I like what the one guy said, you've got to serve somebody. Yeah, yeah. But I said, I'm not serving God, that's a boring life. <laughs> not going to do something like that. Well... Moses got caught up on this Mount Korah where he saw the angel of the Lord in a bush. And he said, you know what? Take your shoes off from the place where you stand is holy ground. Yes. Mountaintop experiences. Here also is where Moses struck the rock and water came out of it. Another mountaintop experience. Can you imagine that? Going through dry time and all of a sudden you sm uh, smite a rock and water comes out of it. I'll tell you that, that would arrest your attention a little bit. How about Mount Sinai where Moses received the Ten Commandments? Take a turn with me to Exodus 19, 20. I'm not going to read all of these, but I want you to go home and read these passages of Scripture because when the Bible puts those things in, it says everything that was written was written for our, our admonition, was written for our warning, was written for us for hope. The Bible says all scriptures given for in, by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. So when he puts all these mountains in there and all these valleys in there, he wants us to look at these and see what happens. Again, I've asked you, how many of you have had mountaintop experiences? Oh, they're wonderful. But you can't stay up there. You've got to get down in the valley also. Take a turn with me over here to Exodus 19 and verse 20. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. From there, when you get home, read all the way through Exodus chapter 20, and you'll see that there's the Ten Commandments, or he gives them the Ten Commandments. But Moses is so caught up in the presence of God that he has what is called a supernatural fast. He doesn't eat or drink for 40 days. 40 days. Everybody say 40 days. 40 days. Comes down, the children of Israel have broken a lot of the commandments. And guess what Moses says? He turns around and goes right back up there. And he's with the Lord for another 40 days. And when he comes down, his face is so bright that basically put a cover over your face because you're reflecting this holy God's image so That's strong. Awesome. Look at the person next to you and say, boy, that'd be great to be able to do that. Amen. Yes. But you know what? You're supposed to do it every day of your life. And so am I. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works and glorify Amen. your Father which is in heaven. Amen. That's found in Exodus 20, Exodus 32 and 33. And here's where I want you to go, and then we're going to finish our mountaintop today. Zechariah 14, 4. Here's where Jesus preached his final service, uh, sermon. And guess what? Where he's coming again. Yes. Everybody say he's coming again. He's coming again. 
Oh, look at the person next to say he's coming again. He's coming again. Aren't you glad? I, I find a lot of Christians that say, yeah, but he's coming again, but not right now. Please don't come now. I would love to have Jesus come yes. now. I would love to have Jesus split that eastern sky yes. again. I'd love to have him come right now. I'd love to have him come and say, here I am. You can find it over yes. in Isaiah 12, uh, 58 where he says, when you're fasting and, you, and you're not hearing your prayers, that there's going to come a time if you fast correctly and understand correctly that he's going to open up them skies and say, here I am. Yes. But I'm not just looking forward to that. I'm looking for the physical return yes. of Jesus Christ yes. when he comes again and says, no more of this stuff. Yes. No more of this stuff. Hallelujah. No more sin in this place. Amen. No more death in this place. Yes. No more disease. Yes. No more crime. No more any of that. Well, look at this in Zechariah 14.4. Wonderful passage of scripture here. It says, And his feet shall stand in that day upon the mountain, or Mount Olives, which is before Jerusalem, on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof, toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. <laughs> Everyone's talking about that Middle East uh, problems. They've been having problems for years. That's right. Thousands of years. The only time it's going to get settled is when his feet touch that mountain, and he's going to show them who's king of kings and lord of lords. Amen? Yes. And it's not going to be Sadat, it's not going to be Hussein, it's Come not on. going to be any of them other ones. Yes. It's going to be Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. King of Kings, Woo. and Lord of Lords. All Amen? Right. That's a mountaintop experience. Amen? Yes. And you and I are going to experience that someday. Yes. But until that time, thank God for the mountains. Yes. But also thank Him for the valleys. Now, if I was to say, how many of you would like to sign up for the valley experiences? <laughs> we have a sign-up sheet in the back of the church, okay? Feel free to sign up. I wouldn't see many people sign up for that. But I want to read a passage of Scripture to you. And that's found in 1 Kings chapter 20. Verses 1 through 29. Now, I'm not going to read the whole passage of Scripture, but I am going to read part of it. When we don't listen to God, we're in trouble. And we don't want to do things God's way, we're, in we're starting to set ourselves up for valley experiences. Oh, yeah. Now that's not always why the valley experiences come. Sometimes. But sometimes the valley experiences come because we just won't listen. Amen? I mean, I, uh, my dad years ago, he said, son, if you get a fast car, you know what you're going to do? You're going to get yourself in trouble. Not me. I'm a good boy. Fifteen points later, no insurance later. <laughs> I got this good boy, got himself in a lot of trouble, amen? That was a terrible thing to sit at a light and vroom, 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 vroom. And you had to go away from the light like a Volkswagen. <laughs> and everybody else is burning rubber and you're just stuck right there. Amen? Well, here's one of those experiences. Everybody say a valley. Yeah. And then Hadad, the king of Syria, verse 1, gathered all his hosts together, and there were thirty and two kings with him. Horses, chariots, and he went up and besieged Samaria and warred against it. There's two capitals there in the nation of Israel. There was Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Those two brothers had a falling out. They split. There was one that remained, and one tribe remained faithful to the Lord. That was the tribe of Judah, and their capital was in Jerusalem. The other, the other tribes, they went with Rehoboam, and they went down to Samaria. They started their own capital. They said, we'll have our capital be Samaria, and it'll be in Israel. Everybody say, but the same God. But the same God. Okay. And he sent messengers, verse 2, to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city, and said unto him, Thus saith Ben-Hadad, Thy silver and thy gold is mine, thy wives also, and thy children, even the best, are mine. Now I looked at that and I thought, this would be a good time to get rid of the wives you didn't want, okay? <laughs> Just tell them, these are my best wives, you can have them. Then a good time to get rid of them, okay? But that's not what he did, okay? He got into fear. Let's see what takes place. Not only that, he's given up the silver, his gold, his children, everything. And the king of Israel, verse 4, answered and said, my Lord, O King, according to thy saying, I am thine and all that I have. Let's not fight, is what he's saying. Let's just be at peace. 
And the messengers came again and said, Thus says Ben-Hadad, saying, Although I have sent unto thee, saying, Thou shalt deliver me thy silver, and thy gold, and thy wives, and thy children, yet I'm going to send my servants unto thee tomorrow about this time, and they shall search thine house and the houses of your servants, and it shall be that whatever is pleasant in your eyes, they shall put it in their hand and take it away. And he's saying, I'm going to take everything you've got now. Everything. See, People, I want you to know, when Satan comes into your life, the Bible says in John 10, 10, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's never given you anything. When he comes in, he comes to what? Help me out. Steal, kill, and destroy. If you can remember that, you'll save yourself a lot of heartache. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Let's see what happens. Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Mark, I pray you and see how this man seeks mischief. For he sent unto me for my wives, and for my children, and for my silver, and for my gold, and I denied him not. And all the elders and all the people said unto him, Hearken not unto him, nor consent. You know what they're saying? Fight. It's terrible when a leader has to have his people say to him, It's time for us to stand up. Yes. The leaders should be the yes. ones that say, It's time for us to yes. stand up. Shouldn't wait for the people to say, It's time for us to stand up. As leaders, we should say, It's time to stand up. We're not taking it no more. Come on. Verse 9, Wherefore he said unto the messenger has been, Hey, dead, tell my lord the king, all that thou didst send for to thy servant at the first, I'll do. But this thing I'm not doing. And the messengers departed and brought him word again. And Ben Hadad sent unto him and said, The gods do so unto me and more also, if the dust of Samaria shall satisfy for handfuls for all the people that follow me. And the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that puts it off. You say, what's that mean? What he's saying is, you know what, you haven't conquered us yet, and I don't think you're going to be able to do this. Amen? So come on with the fight. You want to come on with it? Bring the fight. We're going to let you know that the God we serve is great. Now he's got a little uh, courage now because the people have said, let's what? Fight. And it came to pass when Ben-Hadad heard this message as he was drinking, he and the sir kings in the pavilion said, He said unto his servants, Set yourselves in array. And they set themselves in array against the city. And behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab, king of Israel. Now I want you to put in brackets there, God speaks. See, every time you see a prophet coming, it's because God wants to say something to Israel. God wants to say something to Judah when a prophet comes. He wants to tell them. He wants to give them some instruction. He wants to prevent them from going down the tubes. Anytime you're in a church service like this and you hear a pastor share something or an evangelist share something, they're trying to share things with you from the Word of God so you don't have to experience some of the trauma that's going to take place if you persist in making bad decisions. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? People don't like to hear that. They say, just, just tell us some nice stuff. God wants you to have... Three houses, one down south, one up north, and one in the middle. Tell us God wants us to have six-figure incomes. Tell us that God wants us to have all the wonderful things and never have any problems in our life. Pastor, tell us that. Tell us that God wants us to always look like we're 16. <laughs> tell us God wants us to have bleach white teeth. Tell us God wants us to have all these things. But don't tell us that God's mad at us for if we sin, that the things we do wrong is going to cost us and penalize us. If I didn't do that, and if the evangelist didn't do that, and the one standing in the pulpit didn't do that, and the prophets didn't do that, guess what would take place? We keep doing wrong all along. So a prophet shows up. God speaks, and he says to Ahab, king of Israel, Thus says the Lord, Hast thou seen all this great multitude? Behold, I am going to deliver it into thine hand this day, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Do you know why God's going to do it? The purpose. There's a purpose behind it. He's going to let Israel know, listen, the God that you thought has turned his back on you has not turned his back on you. How many of you ever felt God has turned his back on you? Listen, he has never turned his back on you. But we've got to meet the criteria for what he wants us to do with our lives. There you go. And Ahab said, by whom? And he said, thus says the Lord, even by the young men. Underline that, by the young men. God wants to use young people. Do you know why yes. he's going to use young people? Yes. I'm going to tell you why he's going to use young people against Ben Hadad. Because Ben Hadad had said, I got the, listen, I'm the captain. I, I have the strongest military might out there. No one can whip us. And God says, you know what? I'm going to show you ain't, you ain't nothing. I'm going to take some little punk kids 
and mop the floor with you. Glory. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some punk kids and mop the floor with you. And you're going to know the only one that could have done this is God. Yep. Look at the person next to you and say, I hope God doesn't have to use a punk kid and mop the floor with me. Amen? <laughs> I hear a lot of people say, ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. Listen, God will take a punk kid yes, he and will. mop the floor with you so you'll learn that guess what? God's in charge. Like By the way, we'll see this in a minute. He mentions the young people four times. By whom? And he said, thus says the Lord, even by the young men of the princes of the provinces. Then he said, who shall order the battle? And he said, you, you're going to be in front of all these young kids. I call him a reluctant leader. I mean, he would have loved to have been out there, Brother Brett, with a lot of big shots, okay? Commanders and generals and ones who had all these badges and that, but God said, no, I want you to lead these bunch of snotty-nosed kids out there and win the battle with these snotty-nosed kids. Then he numbered the young men of the princes of the provinces, and there were 232. Everybody said 232. And that after them, he numbered all the people, even all the children of Israel, being 7,000. So 7,232. And they went out at noon, but Ben Hadad was drinking himself drunk in the pavilions. He and the kings, the 30 and two kings that helped him. Do you think he was worried about 7,232? No. But God's saying, you know what? You think you got it, you don't have it. That's right. And the young men, everybody say the young men. Young men. Of the princes of provinces went out first, and Ben Hadad sent out, and they told him, saying, there are men come out of Samaria. And he said, whether they become out for peace, take them alive, or whether they become out for war, take them alive. In other words, it's inconsequential. These are, there's not enough of them to really be a bother to us. <laughs> so these young men, everybody say young men, <laughs> of the princes of the provinces came out of the city and the army which followed them. And they, the young men, slew every one his man, and the Syrians fled. And Israel pursued them, and Ben Hadad, the king of Syria, escaped on a horse with the horsemen. And the king of Israel went out and smote the horses and chariots and slew the Egyptians with a great slaughter. And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said unto him, Go strengthen yourself and mark and see what thou doest, for at the return of the year the king of Syria will come up against thee. So God speaks again. Everybody say, God speaks again. God speaks again. He says, They're not true. They think that that was just a lucky uh, battle that you had. One that it was a lucky chance that you beat them. So they're coming back. God gives us warnings. How many of you have ever yes. received a warning from God? Oh, yeah. He says, okay, you've got to stop that. Yes. Yes. You've got to stop that. He comes back and he says, no, I've given you two warnings. You've got to cut that type of behavior out. And the servants of the kings of Syria said unto him, Their gods, said unto Ben-Hadad, Their gods are the gods of the mountains. Therefore they were stronger than we, but let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And do this thing, take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their rooms, and number thee an army like the army that thou hast lost, horse for horse and chariot for chariot, and we will fight against them in the valleys, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And he hearkened unto their voice and did so. And it came to pass at the return of the year that Ben Hadad numbered the Syrians and went up to Aphek, to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel were numbered and were all present and went against them. And the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids, but the Syrians filled the country. And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord. Third time now he speaks. Because the Syrians have said the Lord is God of the mountains, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude into thine hand, and you'll know that I am the Lord. You know why God allows us to go through valleys? Put a circle there or a star there so that we'll know what? He is the Lord. And they pitched one over against the other seven days, and as it was that in the seventh day the battle was joined and the children of Israel, these young men, slew of the Syrians a hundred thousand footmen in one day. Seven thousand two hundred and thirty-two slay a hundred thousand soldiers who knew war and seven thousand two hundred and thirty-two young people who didn't know war beat the hundred thousand. What are those odds? Astronomical. But God is a God of the mountains. 
and the valleys. Amen? Yes, yes. What are some of the valleys as Christians we might face? How about a job loss? Is that a valley experience? How about the loss of or death of a loved one? Yes. I keep some letters on my wall at home from pastors who have been very influential in my life, so I can look back at them. And they talk about what life is all about and how you got to keep on going in life, even when you don't want to keep on going, even when people are saying things about you, you got to keep on going. I keep those letters. I kept one by Marion Poe. I uh, kept some statements that Pastor Beale had said. I kept some things that Buck Jones had said. Listen, they, they encouraged me to keep on in the fight. Don't back down. Right. Don't quit. Don't do that. Yep. How about surgery? Is that a valley? Oh, yeah. How many of you sign up? Boy, I'd like to go get a leg amputated tomorrow morning. How about that? <laughs> Nobody signs up for that kind of stuff. But God will meet you there. Yes. God will meet you there. How about a foreclosure or eviction from a home? Or is that a valley? How about bad medical diagnosis reports? Is that a bad valley? How about a divorce? Is that a valley experience that you all sign up for? No. How about empty nests when the kids all move out? Is that a valley? Can be. Can be. Can be a valley if they move back too, amen? Can <laughs> be. Some, sometimes with a baby or a spouse, amen, can be a valley. But guess what mighty men and women do in the balance? I'm glad you asked that question. Take a turn with me to 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Chronicles 12, 15. See, you're going to have some valleys in your Christian walk. I have people tell me all the time, well, I'm never going for surgery. I'll, I'll tell you that. I'll die. I'll never go in for surgery. <laughs> Listen, life is precious. Don't say what you will do or what you won't do. I've known some mighty men of God. Mighty men who had deliverance ministries, healing ministries. And by the way, Elisha in the Bible, he died of a sickness. How many of you know that? And when he came along and the, there was the Assyrians fighting against him, they inadvertently opened up his grave and they threw a Syrian soldier, a dead Syrian soldier, on top of his body. And the guy sat up straight. The Syrian, and that's what the Bible says, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he'll quicken your mortal body. Now, he didn't quicken Elisha's, but he sure quickened that soldier, amen? Yes, he did. Amazing. Listen, you talk about mountaintop experiences. When Jesus comes again, the Bible says the graves are going to open. Yeah. Woo! Go Can you right. imagine walking through a grave, uh, through a, 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 a cemetery at that time and seeing graves open up? That'd be awesome. You'll say, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. And then they're... they're Da, 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 like Superman. <laughs> and you're standing there. That's a mountaintop experience. Oh, Pastor, I've never had surgery. You know what, Pastor? You need to stand against it. Don't go in for surgery. If you think I'm going to operate on what you say. Now, God says to me, Warren, no surgery. No surgery. Guess what? Hallelujah, Lord. No yes, surgery. That's right. But I can go down to clean. And they can say, you know what? Your body has apparently healed itself. Go home. That's right. Amen. amen. How many of you know that can take place? Oh, yes, amen. First Chronicles 12, 15 says, These are they that went out over the Jordan in the first month when it had overflown all its banks, and they put to flight all them of the valleys, both toward the east and toward the west. These mighty men said, Listen, get out of my valley. Yes. You're not going to run my life anymore. Come on. Some of you need to say, look, say that some of these things that have bothered you, get out of my valley. Yes. You're, you're not welcome here anymore. That's right. I'm not going to let you run my life anymore. It can be drug addiction. It can be a ton of things. I'm not going to let you run my life anymore. That's right. Jesus is Lord of my life. Hey, and I'm amen. running you out of this valley right now. Amen. Yep. Take a turn with me over to 2 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15. I'll get there in a minute. But did you know Jesus is called the lily of the valley? Yes. Over in the Song of Solomon, he is called the lily of the valley. I read the scripture. It's talking about you and I when we're in the valley. How many of you have ever been a sweet smell in a valley? You know what he's saying? Sometimes the valleys 
pre present the flowers that give the greatest fragrances because of the soil that they're going through at the time. Things don't grow too good on the mountains. Do you know that? Mountains are good to be, to reflect and fall on your knees about this mighty God to serve, but the valleys are where a lot of things grow. That's right. That's right. And 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, it says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the Savior or the fragrance of His knowledge by us in every place. Everybody put valley right next in every place. For we are under God a sweet Savior or sweet fragrance of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the Savior or the fragrance of death unto death and to the other the fragrance of life unto life and who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God or just say that God's with us in the mountains but as of sincerity but as of God in the sight of God speak we in Christ. In other words, He's with us in the good times and the bad. Amen? Amen. Good times and the bad. Yes. What does God do for the believer in the valley? I'm glad you asked that question. Take a turn to me to Isaiah chapter 41. Pastor, I don't want to go through no valleys. If you think people sign up for valleys, you're wrong. That's right. That's people don't sign up for valleys. People don't sign up for valleys. I was talking to a neighbor who had to have a surgical procedure and they were going to take her leg off because of a skiing accident. And she said, uh, she went to talk to the one doctor and the doctor said this and that. Well, they finally put her in a position where she could meet this one doctor. He was over the top in his, uh, how would I put it, his bravado and all that. But God used that cocky doctor to help her keep her leg and everything else. Listen, she didn't sign up for that. None of us sign up for anything in our life. We don't sign up for foreclosures. How many of you signed up and said, boy, I'd like you to foreclose on my house. Would you please come by and do that? We don't sign up for stuff like that, but it happens. But God's right with us. Isaiah 41, verse 17 and 18 says this. When the poor and needy seek water, there is none, and their tongue fails for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. And I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. When I was down in Cleveland the last time, I couldn't believe how many people I had an opportunity to talk to about Jesus Christ. When I went down a couple weeks ago for a test, I couldn't believe the different ind individuals I had an opportunity to talk to about Jesus Christ. And that was in the valleys. Yes. Mm -hmm. I did say, Lord, one more valley experience, I'd love that. No. But in the valleys is where people will listen a lot of times. Yes. Yes. That's right. When things are always going good for everybody, in fact, people will say, you know, if I'm, he I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, you remember Nebuchadnezzar? I don't need him, have needed nothing. How about the church of uh, Laodicea? He says, I'm rich and I have need of nothing. I've heaped all these treasures together for the last days over in the book of James. The rich man. And they didn't even realize how poor they were. I think we in America are doing right. that. that right. We have not realized what we really have. Our money is not in what we have, our, our net worth. It's in Christ. Yes. I wanted to read this to you. One more song. Bruce Matarazzi likes song. How many of you ever heard the words of the Lily of the Valley? Yes. Yes. How many of you know the Lily of the Valley? By a show of hands, put your hands all the way up, real high. Listen to this. I have, I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. He's the Lily of the Valley. In him alone I see all I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow, he's my comfort. In trouble, he's my stay. He tells me every care in him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He all my grief has taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation, he's my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him forsaken and all my idols torn from my heart, and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me and Satan tempts me so, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. 
He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. All I need is him to make me fully whole. Third verse. He'll never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here, while I live by faith and do his blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. With his man he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's a lily of God. I was in Meyer the other day and I was talking to another preacher. Preachers sometimes are just too stinking blunt. I'm going to be honest with you. He said, you're going down to Cleveland, they're going to bust your chest open and fix you up, huh? I said, thank you so much for that word of encouragement. Amen. I said, couldn't you say that they're going to do to the best of their ability to do this while you're sleeping? <laughs> Couldn't you have said they're going to do this to the best of their ability to make sure that you don't have to ever go through this again? But he said they're going to bust your chest open and open you like that. Oh, it even hurts thinking about that, isn't it? They don't do it like that. He's going to be my lily of the valley. Amen. He's going to, he'll never, never, never leave me. Amen. That's right. Oh, I need somebody up here. I need right now, I need Big Mike. I need Mike Alessi. Yes. I need James. I need, where's Doug? Doug, I need you up here. Bill Marsak, where's Bill Marsak? He's counting. He's counting. Okay, I need one more good-sized guy up here. Mr. Bartholomew, you come on up here. David, I want you to stand two here and two here, okay? Well, you want to stand down there? You stand down there. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Take and turn to Psalm 84. You're going to learn something this morning. Okay, I want you to put a little space there, guys. Face each other, okay? Face each other. Not perfect. You're not dying. Right? Face each other, okay? Okay. Got it? How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. Those are called mountaintops. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God, mountaintops. Yes, the sparrow has found the house and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, they shall still be praising thee. Everybody say mountaintop. Mountaintop. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, and in whose heart are the ways of them. The ways of praise is what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well, the rain also fills a pool. Baca means trouble. Now, if a person passes through the valley of Baca, this is trouble, by the way. Does this look like trouble? <laughs> okay. Passing through this valley of Baca. It didn't say you camp out in it, right? That's right. What's it say you do? Yes, you pass through it. You pass through the valley. How many of you ever had to pass through a valley? Yes. Okay, this too shall what? Pass. Pass. You're not staying in it. Right. You're not staying in that trouble. You just saying, okay, well, i got to go through this. I'm going through it. Lord, help me. Help me. Help yes. me. Help me, Lord. You know, I'm strong. I'm, a, I'm strong spiritually, but physically, Lord, I am weak right now. I feel like I'm, I'm not doing this, Lord. But what am I doing? Passing I'm passing through it. You might think a lot of times in life, amen? Different times of valleys. The valleys aren't just one time in your life. That's right. It might be many times. Yes. But don't do this. I got problems. I got problems. I don't to give up. This is so good. No, it's not going to always be like that. You're what? Yes. You're passing yes. through it. Amen. Don't stay in it. That's right. Don't stay in it for the rest of your life. Go ahead, guys. Trouble, you can sit down, okay? <laughs> Here comes trouble. Verse 7 says, they go from strength to strength. What happens? You're getting what? Strong. Getting stronger. Every one of them in Zion appears before God. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer and give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our God, our shield. Look upon the face of thine anointed. 
For a day and night course is better than a thousand. Everybody say mountain time. Mountain time. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Everybody say mountain top. Mountain top. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. Yes. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Say valley. Valley. O Lord of hosts, <coughs> blessed is a man that trust in me. Amen. We're supposed to pass through the benefit. Psalm 23 that we learned when we were a little kid. It says, Yea, though I walk, yea, though I camp out in the valley of the shadow of death. Is that what it says? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. People, I want you to know he's a God of the mountain and the valleys. Now, if I get down to Cleveland and they say, Your body has healed itself. That will be a mountaintop experience. Amen. I'll run through the corridor of Cleveland screaming and hollering, look what the Lord has done. Okay? But if i got to go through the valley, guess what? I'm going to be telling the people the Lord is with me. He's helping me get my life turned around. And if you're in the valley this morning, I'm going to ask every head to be bowed, every eye closed. I'd like why or someone come up here. Brent, why don't you come and play the keyboard for me, brother? Somebody? You're in a valley this morning. There's another valley that's mentioned in the Bible. It's called the Valley of Decision. Yes. Yeah. You've got to make a decision. Yes. What are you going to do in the valley? Just listen. Sometimes, listen, you've exhausted all your finances. Your wife has told you she don't want nothing to do with you anymore. That's a valley of decision. Or your husband has said that. Or you're here this morning and you're saying, well, you know, I, I want to serve Jesus, but what's my family going to say? Don't worry about your family. Walk through the valley with him and watch what takes place in your family. Initially, they might be a little upset with you, but you keep walking and you'll be very influential in your life. Yes. So if that's you this morning, you're going through the valley, would you come at this time? Would you come at this time? If you're going through the valley, would you come at this time? That you're going through the valley. Hallelujah.